There is no device in laser dentistry or medicine where one laser is equally good at treating all tissues well, I mean equally well. That's important. So you have to look at, before you buy a laser, you have to kind of look at what do I want it to do? And that's, if, if you want it to do one thing, don't expect it to do something else, another procedure really well. So if I want a laser that cuts bone, it's not really going to do, it's not really going to do as well maybe treating perio, which we're going to see. So you have to kind of look at that. So one laser can't do everything equally well. Very important. So what does this mean clinically? Whoa, where you go? Oh, someone changed my slides. Um, what we'll see is in pulsed NDAG lasers, it's transparent to water and cell membranes. You'll see this a little later. It's highly absorbed in dark pigment, and it's well-absorbing hemoglobin, and not well-absorbing connective tissue. Let's go on. So this, I think, really shows what the NDAG can do. We'll talk about this. For some reason, I'm missing a slide. This really shows the specificity of the NDAG laser. No other laser can do that. No other laser can do that. The erbium can't, and a CO2 can't, and a dio can't, because of how the NDAG is absorbed in dark pigment. So I'm going to go back one, because I think one of my slides is missing. But let me talk a little bit about where things are absorbed. Erbiums are highly absorbed in, in hard tissues. So like hydroxyapatite, it's very highly absorbed. It's also highly absorbed in water. What are we mostly made of? Water. Last night I was bourbon and wherever, but tonight, today it's water. The idea is, is that if it's absorbed in water, it has a very low penetration. It, it can't penetrate deeply, because once it reaches that first layer of cells, it's done, it's history, it can't really go any further. It's highly absorbed hydroxyapatite. Well, hard tissues, that's great, because erbiums were initially developed to treat teeth, you know, to do cavities and things like that, and to cut teeth and whatever. It also cuts bone. If I'm treating perio, do I want a laser that cuts bone? No, I want to keep as much bone as possible. So an erbium really is not the laser that I want to use to treat perio. And I'm, the reason I'm talking about perio, because if I don't tell you how we got to LAPIP, or the laser-assisted procedure for treating periplantitis, it's a big jump. I have to show the evolution. CO2 is highly absorbed in hydroxyapatite, or hard tissues, and water. So again, very low penetration, but high heat. I don't want to use heat to treat anything around bone. So again, a CO2 really is not the laser I want to use to treat perio. NDAGs, however, are not absorbed in water, so they'll pass right through, kind of like the balloon. It passes through the balloon to reach this target, which happens to be dark pigment, dark tissue, inflamed, dark pigment bacteria, etc. So it can pass through cells to get to its target without damaging the cell itself. So it's not going to remove non-diseased tissue. It's really only going to remove diseased tissue. It's also moderately absorbed in hemoglobin, which allows us to develop fibrin clots, which you'll see a little later. But this really shows the specificity of what an NDAG can do. No other laser can do this, and this is a simple physics. So if you saw this in your office on Monday morning, what would you do? Some people say refer to the oral surgeon. That's great, so I've, and I've had doctors say, well, we're going to excise it, and I always tell them, well, are you going to take away that much tongue? Well, if it's your mother-in-law, yeah, you know, I would probably do that. But if it's your patient, you don't want to do that because you don't want to take away that much tongue, and if you try to puncture it, it's just going to bleed everywhere. I saw this patient, and I said, well, the ND, I knew the NDAG is absorbing hemoglobin, very well, but it's not really well absorbed through tissue that's not red. So we treated it. Now, this is one treatment I'm going to show you. And you can see here, so that's the initial treatment. This is, this is immediately post-op. I didn't puncture this. It's not bleeding. The laser is actually, laser energy is actually absorbed by the blood. Two weeks later, that's what it looks like. Four weeks later, that's what it looks like. No chard, no bleeding. Very simple. But using laser physics and where interaction happens, we can do things like this. Or we can do things like this, gingival depigmentation. Very nice, this patient came in, wanted this to look better. I said, okay, well, we'll treat it with my laser, because the other option that she got from another periodontist was we'll take a diamond burr 
and strip away your outer layer of gum tissue and then maybe graft some tissue on top, which sounds absolutely brutal. So we treated her. This is what she looked like. I did half her mouth because she only paid half the fee. So, you know, this way you know they're going to come back and get the other half treated. No, I want to show this. Why? Because it's just a nice contrast. But this is what she looked like right after. And this is one treatment. What you're seeing here is the underlying tissue. Now, does it look burned? Does it look charred? Does it look dead? Does it look necrotic? No. It's healthy, connective tissue underneath there. This is what's happening inside a periodontal pocket when we treat with the LANAP procedure, is removing disease tissue, leaving behind healthy connective tissue. This is what she looked like a week later. And this is what she looked like four weeks later. Very nice. We got a little bit of the melon coming back, but not to the same extent. I think this is a lot more aesthetic than having bright pink gums. And she was very happy, had very little discomfort. 